Hi there, Vic Bailey and T-Session. I want to do a very quick video about the Inspire implant. I've had a patient recently who had a Inspire implant put in because of his obstructive sleep apnea. And what I want to do is show you what it looks like inside his throat when the machine is turned on. So he's awake at this time. And we just wanted to see because he wanted to get the timing just right. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. But if you look at this video here, you'll see that you've got the voice box or the epiglottis at the back there, the back wall of the throat there. You've got the, uh, the tongue down here. And uh, I'm looking in from the nose, looking down into the throat. And so now we turn on the Inspire implant and you'll see that one side of his tongue brings the whole tongue forward as well as the epiglottis, opening up the airway. You should be able to see the voice box now, the little vocal cords there. And so you can see there's a much clearer airway now, really nice view of the inside of his throat. It's amazing to see actually how well he did. He is, I think he's on almost the lowest setting here with his Inspire and he wants to try I think the idea was that he, he wants to push it harder and harder and harder right to the top, but the idea is not to get as much tongue protrusion as possible. The idea is to do just enough. You don't want to knacker out the nerve or anything like that. You want to bring it just open enough so you can breathe. Because some people, when you've had enough sleep, uh, you know, people with obstructive sleep are really, really tired, and they're trying to sleep and they can't breathe, and what you do is, when you get an obstruction, you go, oh, you to wake up and you fall asleep and you're chronically tired even the smallest thing will allow you just to fall asleep but when you're using inspire or any other treatment for obstructive sleep apnea you start feeling more awake and you don't need you're not quite as dog tired all the time so if you do have a problem you can get woken up by the inspire implant if you don't set it right um, so if you're setting it too high because you want a maximum amount of effort that's not how you should work. It's not like you're trying to pump in more air with the CPAP device just to open up your eyes as much as possible. You're trying to get the amount of air in that's all that's required. You don't want to force so much air in that it's going to keep waking you up purely because of the CPAP. The same thing with the tongue. You don't want to pull it right out of your mouth. If only opening up by, he's on level, I think, three here. You can go up to level 10 or even we can push it up further if necessary. And so the idea is to try and bring the tongue forward so he can breathe, but not so much that it starts waking him up with the movement of the tongue or the, the feeling that there's an impulse at the back of the, um, the, the neck as it, this is attached just about here. The way, this is more for surgeons now, from what I understand, the way to deal with this is to make sure that the, the electrode that wraps around the nerve is just on the nerve. There's no extra tissue around it. So clean off the nerve as much as possible. Be really, really gentle, obviously. But when you put the electrode around, it's touching the nerve itself rather than all this extra tissue. Because if it has to pump uh, that energy through that extra tissue to get to the nerve, you have to do a lot of energy. And that can spill out to other areas. So, and you can get like a sort of noise there. So um, I think it, in terms of numbers, most people are at roughly about 1.3, 1.4. He started at about 0 0.5 or something like that in terms of the amount of energy delivered to his nerve. So he can do a very small amount of energy because he didn't want him to wake up with a buzzing noise. So he can go up to about 8 or 9 if he wanted to. It doesn't seem to still wake him up because there's no extra energy going up elsewhere. But this is on level 3 or something. Uh, and so it's still opening up his airway. It works really well for him. The reason why we did this for him was because he felt that it was slightly out of sync. So when he took a breath, it felt like it was not contracting at the right time. So the way it works is that once the computer recognizes that there is a, you're breathing in, you're meant to pull the tongue forward. But what he was feeling is that because his respiration at the number of times he breathes per minute is quite fast, he was, this waveform would happen like this, by which point he's already on to the next breath. So it was sort of out of sync for him. So we played around with this waveform, this going up and then dropping down again. It's a bit like a, like a sawtooth sort of look. And we just made it slightly narrower to see if that worked for him. It didn't really. But then we made the slope slightly more sharp rather than sort of slow up like this. We made it slightly sharper because it didn't seem to wake him up at all. It, he's one of these people who 
isn't woken up by this. He's more woken up by the slight interruptions in his breathing. So we wanted to get onto it, not, not let it sort of half block him over. So he has that, what we call a phenotype, where he gets woken up very easily. And it was really interesting to see. Uh, it's difficult because I think getting the settings right is really, really important, individualising each of these settings for each of these people. So uh, this chap is having a sleep study and then maybe three days of sleep study and maybe also another full PSG just to make sure there's no other problems with his, um, his dream sleep and other things like that. So I you don't really realise <laughs> how interesting dealing with these implants is. Um, and you can tinker with it and get it just right for uh, the person you're with. Um, I had the same thing with a chap who had not very bad sleep apnea at all and had really bad insomnia and he had the genio implant um, and he felt that was a better one for him because it was, there was a bit of lateral wall uh, connection as well with his um, sleep apnea. And with him, because he's got quite bad insomnia, we were worried that it would keep waking him up with the buzzing and stuff like that. So I had to make sure it was straight on the nerves so it wouldn't wake him up. But the great thing about it is that we can keep tinkering with it. With the genome, you can go up in one, um, one percentage point increments. And we kept going until we get it just right. And amazingly, it's incredibly, even with the insomnia, he's managing to breathe better. The, the, the sleep apnea is now no longer waking him up and giving him more insomnia. So he's coming off his insomnia tablets bit by bit. Um, it's just nice to see all these uh, positive things coming back from people who've had implants. Oh, and the last thing is that I'm hoping for the Restera implant. Uh, the team there have got a huge amount of funding now, and we're about to, fingers crossed, start a trial at, uh, in England for people who want to try the Restera implant. Uh, we'll be putting it next to the nerves. If you don't know about the Restera implant, it's done typically while you're awake. I'm a bit scared to do it while people are awake at the moment, but the idea is that while you're awake, we use an ultrasound, find the nerve, and we drop a little pellet right next to the nerve so it can stimulate that. So you sort of inject it in and take that. It's not a big operation as such. And then that implant will be powered either by a collar, which is, um, powers these implants, or we're thinking about putting it in a pillow. So you're lying on the pillow and it powers your implants for you. There's all sorts of ideas, maybe in a pyjama or something. I like the idea of a pyjama or, or a t-shirt like that because it powers it here, but also it's got a sensor here that monitors your breathing. So it knows if your it knows your oxygen levels, it knows how well you're breathing, all those sorts of things. Um, it's just really exciting. <laughs> and although implants are just one part of the treatment for obstructive sleep apnea, I think it's quite exciting. Um, I've been doing operations for sleep apnea for, for a decade now. Um, it's just nice to see something that you can individualise for each of your patients to get it just right for them. And the, the interesting thing is that things seem to change with time. Some people go, I feel great. I've lost loads of weight now. Um, I'm sleeping much better. I get woken up quite a lot easier now because I've had plenty of sleep. I'm not so dog tired anymore. And so can you turn down the settings now? because I've lost weight and I, I wake up a bit more easy, so I don't need so much pressure in there. So there's all sorts of little things that you can do to tinker with. It feels like you're a medic with changing medications and things like that. It's not my field at all, but yeah, it's nice. Um, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, I hope that's been of some use to some people out there. Um, do take care. All right, bye-bye.